if you drive along this road late at night and you're speeding, it's reported you can see a white light following you. There's actually a ghost. It became so popular in 2010 for teenagers to drive bikes down here really late at night and fast to try and get the ghost to come back. It became famous. So actually a feature film was made in 2013 about the Lemon Tree Passage Road. He owns a motorbike and he gets to the intersection at Lemon Tree Passage Road. BANG! Oh, oh my god! It's been hit. So now every time a car full of teenagers speeds down Lemon Tree Passage Road, a bright light shines on them. All the way. Keep your eyes out the back. What did I say? What did I tell you? We tell real stories here. You gotta get out of here. <laughs> That's what we're on now, the road to Lemon Tree Passage. Lemon Tree Passage is on Port Stephens, about two and a half hours north of Sydney. It's a large waterway bigger than Sydney Harbour and popular with sailors and holiday makers alike. Phil, with his son May 20, was the first to arrive. So we're on the water. It's about one o'clock. I'm down at Lemon Tree Passage with uh, Phil and John, and I think the other John's coming today as well. When we got here, there was a good 10 to 15 knots, but it seems to have died down quite a bit, which is good, because I think for the rest of the weekend, it's going to be pretty strong. So we're just going to potter around down here today in the top end of Port Stephens. I've never been here before. Looks really nice. And then uh, we'll probably come back down this way tonight to find somewhere to stay. We're looking for the uh, seven knots that's meant to be here somewhere. Can't quite see it. What have you found, Phil? There's one knot. You got one knot? Uh, at the end of a rope, but it's the one knot. <laughs> Some dolphins coming to check us out. Ooh. Yes, that's a bit frustrating, isn't it? But uh, straight over there is North Arm Cove, which has got a lot of history. In 1920, American architect and town planner Walter Burley Griffin won the design competition for Australia's capital city, Canberra. He also designed the Sydney waterfront suburb of Castle Crag and wanted to replicate it here at North Arm Cove. Plans were drawn up, land was sold, but the development was never completed as the local council deemed it too expensive to put in the infrastructure. And uh, you can still buy land there today very cheaply, but you can't build there, which is a bit weird, really. Now I've gone three o'clock and there's two knots, maybe. Very peaceful though, just been watching the dolphins go past. They're not that close, unfortunately, but you can hear them from quite a, a way away coming up to breathe. Bay over there. Last, I think we've got a few knots. Maybe two or three. Better late than never. like a choreographed ballet. John gracefully gliding past in his Waller 5.4.
A little bit of wind makes all the difference. Going on quite nicely now. It's getting up towards four o'clock. The sun's beginning to go down. So we're heading back to where we're going to stay tonight, further down the creek, I think. Because tomorrow it's meant to be pretty, pretty windy from early on. So it's re-entered Lemon Tree Passage, and now we're gently going down between the mainland and this island to find Gibbers Beach, which I think is a bit further down. Uh, it's obviously not a lot of wind in here, which is uh, good for staying overnight, but not so good for trying to get there. I think the, uh, the tide's coming in, so we've got a bit of tidal assistance. Oh, good morning. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. It's been drizzling on and off a little bit. Uh, just made my coffee. And uh, there is wind already. I've just checked the weather forecast. It should be um, 12 knots today, which is okay. Not sure about the rain. I think it's gonna rain on and off all day. Very cloudy. Very different from yesterday. Anyway, a couple of people I think have pulled out. I think there's probably a couple more coming this morning, so we'll meet them. Uh, and then we'll hopefully go for a bit of a sail. I do have everything on. It was a little bit chilly last night. <laughs> I know I often say that, but yeah, it was a bit chilly. Um, and my wife did give me a hot water bottle and I should have filled it up with water and used it, but I was too lazy and didn't. Um, anyway, it's all good, it's all good. Well, we're sailing back to the ramp now to see if there's anybody else there. It's still raining and a little bit chilly. Did I say that before? <coughs> Wind's in the right direction so we don't have to motor. I think it's stopped drizzling for a bit. It was clear, clear sky behind us, so hopefully it'll clear up a bit. Kevin joined us with his FAR 5000 and Dave with his Tammy Nori. Yeah. Oh, I'm good, Paul. How's yourself? Good. Did you get, have a good trip down? I had a great trip. I only had to come about 20 kilometres, so... Oh. A good trip. I, I live pretty close. Oh, I didn't realise it I was so close. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve with his Bay Raider 17. Are oh, you looking forward to an adventure? Oh, with you, Paul, <laughs> absolutely, mate. <laughs> what else would it be? It's been a tough night. I've gone to the dark side. I'm having an egg and bacon roll. <laughs> egg runs down the side of your mouth. Yes, we're doing it tough here. Having really enjoyed my temporary foray into the darkness, it was time to formulate a plan for the day. So we stayed around here somewhere last night. Right. The caravan park's just around that point. Yeah. And there's the other caravan park there. So for tonight, I'm just wondering if it's going to be south, southwest, whether we'd be okay on this side of the world. Yeah, yeah. Because anyway. it was meant to be westerly yesterday, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. It was west something now. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you ready for an adventure? Adventure, I sure am. <laughs> Always an adventure. So I'm with Ross who's come down to see us off. Ross, you watch Sailing Kate Louise, do you? I certainly do. One of my favourite YouTube channels. Oh, you're so kind. <laughs> Hope you have a fantastic trip. Oh, I nearly got that. I nearly got that. I thought you were going to get wet. <laughs> it's very narrow, the entrance to the Lemon Tree Passage here. Tides in. So I think we've got seven boats this time. Just heading out through the channel, uh, away from the Lemon Tree Passage, and then we're gonna go for a bit of a sail. The wind's picked up a bit more now. Got a 
double reef in, probably 12 knots, something like that. Maybe I don't need a double reef, but I've got one in. Seems to be going okay. Not overpowered, that's the main thing. And it looks like the skies are clearing up a bit, which is good. So that soldier's point and around behind there is the north end of uh, Port Stevens. It's a big waterway, big shoal in the middle. Back to Lemon Tree Passage. Steve and Kevin should be coming out shortly. Just hit 4.9 knots, which is all right with a reef in. Coming into Tsunilba Bay. I think the wind's picked up a bit again. Still only got one reef, but uh, I think it's definitely got a little bit stronger. I'm going to stop at Tsunilba Bay for a bit of a break. It's a good sail. A bit chilly on the ears. Um, I think it's, I don't know, 13, 14 degrees, something like that. Kevin's Far 5000 is part of the far range of trailer sailors designed by Bruce Farr in New Zealand. Up to 97 were built from 1977 onwards, when trailer sailing was most popular. Yeah, it is a little bit, a little bit fruity. We're going to head over to a uh, faint cove and then back again. No, no, back to uh, down Taylor's Beach, I think it's called. John's Bottrell Explorer is 16 feet and the design dates back to the late 60s. Over 150 were built, and there's still a large fleet in Victoria where they race regularly. Just going over to Fame Cove to have a look, and it's a bit of a feisty uh, sail across here. I've got a one reef, no Genoa, and the mizzen's right out. Next thing I'll be dropping the mizzen, I think. Doing uh, five, five and a half knots straight across. Gets a bit chilly when the sun goes behind the clouds. But uh, yeah, absolutely flying. Uh, the wind's definitely dropping, so I've uh, just shaken out all the reefs to try and catch the guys up. They did leave before me, though. So the rain's come, the wind has swung around, so uh, we're motoring 
mate, probably just somewhere where we were last night. We were trying to sail to a beach up here, but then the wind swung around in the wrong direction, so... Yeah. I'm, I'm wet. It's getting cold, because now the sun's gone behind the clouds. It's about uh, nearly five o'clock, I think. Yeah. People say, why do you always say I think? It's because I'm not sure. I couldn't put this look at my watch. Because I've got to turn it on. Yeah. And we think that's called Taylor's Beach. Uh, which is where we were going to go, but uh, it's not very protected in the southerlies blowing straight onto the beach. After an interesting day, it's probably time for dinner. So tonight I'm gonna to try something a bit different. You know, I always like to try new things. I'm gonna try a beef stroganoff flavoring. Sorry, yeah, beef stroganoff, that's right. Beef stroganoff flavoring. Um, I'm gonna cut up an onion. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, mushrooms instead of meat. I'm gonna have it with some noodles that are here somewhere. Um, and I've got some tomatoes to add to it as well. Um, bit of a trial and error, we'll see what happens. My oil dispenser, which I think's a good idea. My mushrooms. I don't know what's in it. Probably not very healthy, but it's dehydrated, which makes it easier. Probably don't need all of it. One thing. And I'm going to use. So there you have it, vegetarian stroganoff made out of mushrooms and onions with a flavouring and some milk and udon noodles. It might not be MasterChef, it might not be healthy, but it's cheap, dehydrated, easy to do on a boat, so why not give it a go? That's actually not too bad at all. It's just very simple. Mushrooms, onions, udon noodles, a bit of milk and some flavouring. Um, I know I had an egg and bacon sandwich this morning that I probably shouldn't have, but don't tell anybody. Mm. It's good. Some people might say I haven't used a dehydrated meal for a while. Well, I brought a dehydrated chili along um, in case we stayed for three nights. So it was a pretty good day today. We had a nice sail this morning. The wind got up a bit, uh, got a bit stronger in the afternoon, got a bit cloudier, got a bit wetter, and then the wind died and we had to get towed back. But um, all in all, it was good fun and a good day. Who knows what tomorrow's got in store. Still hear it now, the tarp flapping all over the place. Did actually snap one of the fiberglass poles in the middle of the night, so I had to get up and sort that out. 
do have some spare ones, but uh, I'll fix it when I get home. And it rained a bit as well. But uh, I think it's going to be a sunny day. Looks like the sun's up already. You know how it, when it's windy you can hear rattles? And you get up and you find one rattle. And then you hear another rattle, so you get up and fix that. I think I probably got up and down about five or six times in the middle of the night just trying to sort rattles out. Something weird's just happened. My outboard started two or three times by itself. And then I stopped it, and it started, and I stopped it. And, uh, and now it won't start at all, even though I've got uh, battery power. But so something has gone a bit of a eye. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna try and sail back, and the guys will be back there to grab me when I get near the uh, jetty. It's always something. I managed to cross the uh, main waterway. Now I'm just sailing in between the boats, trying to get back to the jetty. Luckily the wind's in the right direction, but it might die up here. Was it a simple electrical problem? Or was it the ghost of Lemon Tree Passage playing with my outboard? I don't know. But just as I was getting to the jetty, a fishing boat came past at speed and the wash pushed me onto the ferry. It could have gone horribly wrong, but luckily it didn't. You'll be pleased to know that my outboard is now fixed. Rafting up to Kevin's far gave me the opportunity to have a look inside. So this is the inside of uh, Kevin's far 5000. What a lot of room. So much room. The good thing is the centerboard case is not too high, so you've got a lot of leg room. <laughs> so we're not round a campfire, but it's just as good with a bacon roll, isn't it? Sure is. <laughs> Very good, bacon and egg rolls. So if you're in Lemon Tree Passage, uh, John Dory's egg and bacon rolls are very good. So John, what, what were you saying about boats? What's boats stand for? Well, boats stands for bring out another thousand. Of course. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and I might need a new outboard myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, more than a thousand for a new outboard, I think. <laughs> yeah, true. Thanks for watching our trip to Lemon Tree Passage. Please hit the like button or subscribe, or even leave a comment, I will reply. And as always, I'll see you on the water somewhere next time.